All right, we are wrapping up our study of Acts, um, which doesn't seem right, but, but we are. We're wrapping up our study of Acts, and we are going to cover quite a bit of ground. Um, we're not going to go through detail by detail like we have um, in the other videos, because I really want to focus on uh, wrapping up what we have learned uh, about the early church, how we can apply that to our lives, um, and how we can use that going forward as we serve, as we share the gospel. And so tonight we're really talk, or today we're really talking about standing firm for the gospel. And I'm going to ask us some questions, and I want us to really think through um, these things and really. Um, ask these questions of ourselves. And so the first question um, is, are we whitewashed walls? And in 23, in chapter 23, we see Paul um, is giving a defense for himself um, in front of the uh, Sanhedrin, and he is uh, making a defense for himself and for the gospel. And he refers to the high priest as a whitewashed wall. And so tombs are often whitewashed to make them more visible. We see in Matthew 23 uh, that Jesus is even referring to them as whitewashed walls, that on the outside they look uh, righteous and they look wonderful, but on the inside there is death. And this is a this is a metaphor for these believer or these so-called believers, these Jews, they are whitewashed walls. Uh, on the outside, they look righteous, but on the inside, they're dead. And this is, this is really a, a tough question for a lot of people to answer. Uh, when we look at our lives and we look at our uh, relationship with the church, do we just attend church because we feel like we have to or... Uh, are we just saying the right words because that's how we were raised? Um, but do we really have a true relationship with Christ? And Paul's asking that question. He's, he's making that statement. He's saying that they are whitewashed walls. And it really should call us into question and say, are we whitewashed walls? Are we uh, looking righteous and saying the right things on the outside, but inside there is death? Uh, because we have not been changed by the gospel, um, our our church words, our actions, our outward appearance, what are they covering up on the inside? Are we whitewash walls? And I think it really uh, is important for us to stop and consider and stop to think about uh, because this is um, this is this is a hard place for a lot of people who have grown up in church and spent their life in church, but have never truly been changed by Christ, by the gospel. So the next question is, do we have courage to hold fast? At the end, uh, in sort of the middle of 23, uh, we see another vision. Paul gets another vision given from God. And just as he did in Corinth, and this vision is to encourage him. He assures him that he will survive and that he needs to go to Rome. Uh, we say a great deal come against him, assassination conspiracies, legal delays, storms, shipwreck, uh, and snake bite, but nothing can prevent the fulfillment of God's plan. So where does our courage come from? What is our source of strength? God is our courage. He is our source of strength through the Holy Spirit. And we have the word of God to reveal the truth that what he says he will do. He will do just as he promised, just as he said. He will fulfill it. That is our source of courage, knowing that God will complete and do exactly what he said he will do. Then we see in 24 verse 5, will we be agitators? What will we be stand accused of? Uh, Paul is being accused of being an agitator. He's agitating the people by sharing the gospel, by talking about uh, Christ. They called him a chronic troublemaker, a leader of a disreputable religious sect, and a person who is threatened to profane the temple by bringing in uh, Greeks or Gentiles. And he makes a defense for himself. He says, I am only guilty of being a member of the way, a disreputable religious sect, as they call it, uh, the way of following Christ. 
And he says, you can't, you have no proof of these other things. These other things uh, I have not done. And he did not profane the temple. Um, he did bring Jews or bring Greeks and Gentiles in. And to the Jews, that was uh, diminishing or profaning the temple. Uh, but he was doing what God had commanded. And so in uh, the eyes of the people, these are the things that they saw. But in the eyes of God, Paul was not doing anything wrong. And so he makes a defense for himself based upon the gospel of Christ. So what will we stand accused of? Will we be agitators to the world's way of life? Uh, will we be accused of being Christ followers and bringing the lost in? These men in Acts, they turn the world upside down. That is what scripture tells us. They turn the world upside down. What will be said of us? What will be said of us as believers in this day? Our response to culture, our response to the world, what will be said of us? And and this is an important question. Will we be stand st will we stand accused of being followers of Christ? Will we live that out? Uh and then in the end of 20, 20, 24, we see are we willing to wait? Paul waited two years in Caesarea in chains. He waited two years uh, before he made a plea to get to Rome. And this is this is a, a, a difficult place. I can't imagine being uh, in prison that long and not knowing when I was going to get to where I needed to go and having to wait through that. But I feel confident that Paul in this place did not waste the time he had, but shared the gospel with those around him and made <coughs> the most of his time, made the most of um, the people that were there in front of him and ministered to them while uh, he waited, while he waited for what God had planned. And in God's time, he will do just as he promised. And we can trust that he will see us through to eternity. He will bring it to completion. So what will our defense be? In 26, Paul presents his testimony as his defense. It glorifies the work that God has completed. The best defense is the name of Christ and the work that he has done in our lives. And in 1 Peter, it's clear that we are called to be ready to give an account for the hope that we have. And so are we ready to stand and give a defense for the gospel and for ourselves, should it be necessary? The end of 27, the question is, will we go where it's necessary? Uh, an angel speaks to Paul and commands him not to be afraid. The one to whom he belongs and the one he worships is with him and will see him safely through. The shipwrecks, but they're still alive. They're on an island. God did as he promised. He kept them alive. And God placed Paul exactly where he needed to be. It wasn't an easy journey to get where he was going to Rome, but he was willing. He was willing to to go? Are we willing to go where we are called? Even if it is not easy, even if it is a struggle, are we willing to go where we are called? And finally, will we proclaim? In 28, at the very end of 28, as we close out the book of Acts, uh, we know that Paul's been under house arrest in Rome for two years, preaching and teaching to anyone who would hear and at the end of Acts, he has not yet been tried, as God said would happen. Uh, Paul was acquitted and released at some point, probably before 64 AD, when Nero set fire to Rome and blamed the Christians. Uh, he set out again, going to uh, Greece, Thessalonica, Crete, Ephesus, uh, probably Spain, um, and even as far as Britannia or Great Britain, um, in 67 AD, Paul is imprisoned again by Nero and executed. And for Paul, Luke, and those who followed the message about Jesus and the glorious kingdom of God was going to go on in triumph. It was going to go on regardless of what happened uh, to the apostles and the disciples and to Paul. The gospel was going to continue to go forward. Uh, he even says this in 2 Timothy 2.9, that he says the gospel 
is not bound. Uh, he may be bound, but the gospel is not bound. The gospel will continue to go forward. So as we finish this, as we wrap up Acts, I pray that you'll ask these questions, that you will um, see where God is leading you and how you can apply these lessons that we've learned from the early church, how it can encourage you to go forward and sharing the gospel with others. And I pray that it has been an encouragement to you uh, and that you have been able to really glean from the lessons learned in the pages of Acts. So I really appreciate you joining us. We will be tackling Romans in the fall. And so I hope you will stick around, subscribe so that you can uh, keep up to date with all the goings on and the things that we're doing. And I just am so grateful for you. And I'm so thankful that you have been with us through the study of Acts.